everybody. Welcome. This is Drawing Together with Scott Meyer. Uh, I am, uh, it's Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, where we meet every week to draw together. So if you're new, um, what you're going to want to know that this show is designed for us all to get together and draw along. So if you want to find the reference photo, it is in the description below. And I know there are some issues with that earlier today. Um, so I had the, there was a, an additional letter added to that link. So it wasn't working earlier, but I corrected it. So if, if it's still showing up as incorrect, you may have to refresh the page, but hopefully it's working now. So I just wanna welcome everybody. Uh, this is, it's been hot here in Colorado and I'm very appreciative to be in air conditioning and drawing with you all today. Um, this is a challenging one today. <laughs> this preparatory drawing took me forever because uh, it's been, I realize it's been a long time since I worked with the figure. Um, and that's why we're working on it today. So I'm putting it out there that I am a little nervous to draw because I have no idea if it's going to turn out. Um, so when working with this preparatory drawing, um, I did quite a few sketches in advance. Um, and I also did some kind of tracing. I kind of projected the, the reference image on top of the page to really make sure I understand those proportions correctly and, and see where I was going wrong with it. So I'm gonna try to do this without any of those additional tools and see where it goes because that's what the show is all about. So like I said, I'm putting it out there that this may be a horrible mess. We'll see how it goes. So um, again, if you wanna follow along, you can find the reference image in the link, in the link below. That's the one that's it's, it's right here. Um, so you, if you open up the description, expand it, you'll find that link and you'll also find a link to the show page where you can share your work when you're done. Um, I am very excited again to see everybody here, so many familiar names. Uh, with, this is episode what, 98, so we are coming up on our 100th episode and we've been talking here at Artist Network about doing something special for that. Um, and so kind of launching on the 100th episode into some fun things for the month of July um, geared towards uh, kind of celebrating this 100th episode and focusing on drawing. So, okay. Materials. Here's what we're working on today. I have the uh, the the link to the materials. A list of the, of the materials can be found in the description below. So this is Stonehenge Pearl Gray. It's a fairly light colored, uh, light tone in terms of the toned paper, um, but it does it, it does have a tone to it. It's a little warm, um, and it looking at your screen right now, it may just look like my camera is not uh, exposed properly, but it is. Um, it is a toned paper. If I take a sheet of white paper on top, you can see exactly how much darker it actually is. Um, so it give you a sense of where we're starting from. So this isn't necessarily about working on toned paper. I just chose to do that um, so that I can work both additively and subtractively, which you'll see as we go along. So if that's all confusing to you, it'll make sense. Um, for the drawing materials, I chose to work in graphite today. So I have a 3B and a 6B, a little bit darker than what you might wanna work with, but I, I kinda push things a little bit darker in the value range so that it shows up better on camera here. I also have a um, this Nero Krita color kind of black drawing pencil. So if I really need to boost that contrast up a little bit, I can do that. Um, because I'm working on the toned paper, I wanna bring out some of the highlights. So I'll be using this General's Charcoal White and you can see that these pencils are really starting to get down to the nubs. <laughs> I've been using these a lot, so I'm excited to get a new set soon. For the erasers, I have uh, just my Derwent uh, rubber eraser. I have carved down into the sharp point so I can get in there in the details, plus my kneaded eraser. And I forgot my, um, I need my trusty blending stump, so I've got that right here. So a blending stump that um, I can use to kind of smooth things out and control some of those details. All right. Uh, yeah, Mad Moments Go mentioning Degas. Yeah, that's exactly, it's hard to look at a, a dancer like this and not think about Degas. So of course that's kind of running through my mind as, as well as it is I'm sure yours. Um, and I'm gonna try to be channeling that a little bit. Um, in particular, one of the things that Degas is masterful at is the line work, and we talk about that a lot in this, the series, the difference between using line in your contour versus shape. 
So we'll explore that for this uh, drawing as well. I want to kind of get going here because I know we, we have a lot to get through, um, but uh, while I'm working here, we'll try to describe a little bit of, of what the challenges are. Um, now, I'm even though I'm working with the tone paper, I want to drop the value down even more. So I'm just using you know the side of the pencil and this overhand grip to tone the page, um, giving me a little bit more to work with in terms of that value range. Um, and so this may be something that you would like to do as well. I don't know as if this is a, really a necessary step, but it's just where my head's at today. Um, in part because I kind of need to get my head in the game. I'm a little scattered today. Uh, and I know I say that a lot actually, <laughs> but a little scattered. And so um, that's kind of the role that drawing is playing for me now is to help bring things into focus, kind of slow my brain down a little bit and just kind of be here in this moment drawing. Um, and so toning the page kind of serves both the, the actual drawing as well as, as my mind. It's just kind of getting me loosened up, warming up. Um, so this is the 3B and you can see that I, I've taken a razor blade to carve back some of the wood to expose more of the core. And as you're building up that tone, if you hold your pencil far back like this, um, it's a little bit more gentle on the on the surface and you're not it, with this overhand grip because i'm using the side of the pencil all of those marks are floating on the surface i'm not creating embossed lines um, that i might have to contend with later um, now one of the things that can be helpful is to allow that pencil to roll in your fingers as you're building up these layers change the direction of your marks kind of work all over if you see a kind of a, a dark and light areas forming, uh, try to target the light areas, try to maybe kind of tighten up the marks and fill those in a little bit, and that helps to create an even tone. Um, this isn't necessarily about creating an even tone, it's just about setting the stage for an answer here. So. Um, Let's see, uh, oh, and oh, I forgot to mention questions. So if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them out in the chat. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. Other people viewing, I encourage you to answer them uh, as, as you'd like to as well, because I like to hear or read people's comments here. So um, let's see, if you type them in all caps, it's a little bit easier for me to see. Um, it may look like you're yelling, but it just it's really for my benefit, it helps. Um, uh, and if I do miss a question and you really want me to answer, um, feel free to type it again. Sometimes I just miss them and I really do my best to answer every question. Um, now, I also need, need my paper towel here. So I've got, got a paper towel kind of a well-used one that I'm just gonna kind of wipe things down. Now I like this Stonehenge paper. It's a, uh, Legion makes this, and it's a cotton rag paper, and I've talked about that a lot. It, it, it's really kind of been my obsession lately in terms of drawing, uh, and I really, like the feel of the rag paper. There's a softness to it. It'll hold the material really well, um, but um, but it's not so rough that I, I can't get in there and get some of the detail. So it's really a nice balance uh, for my uh, mind as, as we're working here. Um, Let's see, oh, and if anybody's interested in learning more about Dega, one of the, the projects we worked on a few years ago, um, we created kind of a documentary series with Desmond O'Hagan, who's a Denver artist, um, and it's called Decoding Dega, and there was a show at the Denver Art Museum all on Degas, and we were able to meet with the curator, uh, Dr. Standring, um, kind of pick his brain, and this kind of documentary and workshop series follows Desmond's kind of pursuit as he's creating master copies, both drawing as well as pastel, um, and trying to analyze Degas' work through the, the process of creating a master copy, so uh, might be something you're interested in. Um, oh, a nail artist said, do you need to have an idea about anatomy um, to draw body shapes. Um, and then Klaus is also um, asking about the, uh, the pencils. Okay, so two questions here. I'll get to the pencils first because we're gonna be talking about kind of the, the, what's necessary for really creating the figure um, as we go along. Uh, I'm using these Derwent graphic um, 
uh, graphite pencils, and I've got the 3B and the 6B. And again, they're, they're a little bit darker and softer, largely for the benefit of the camera so that it shows up a little bit better. When I use some of the harder materials, it just, it, it takes a while to get to the point of actually being able to see the work. So that's what I'm working on. And I generally like softer uh, graphite, um, but what you might uh, do is work with, um, uh, work with some harder uh, drawing pencils first and then, uh, and then work towards the softness, so. Um, now, in terms of anatomy, I, I think it is helpful to understand anatomy. Um, at the same time, I think drawing is a way to get to that understanding. So they kind of work back and forth. I think a great way to, to learn about anatomy is to draw a subject um, and, and again, also having a, an understanding of anatomy can be helpful with the drawing. So I, I don't um, necessarily think that if you don't have an understanding of anatomy that, that it prevents you from drawing the figure. Uh, but that's just, again, my kind of particular take on it. When I think about drawing, I like to approach drawing in such a way that that it allows you to really tackle any subject. You don't want to think about, think about any subject as fundamentally different from another. Drawing for me is about a set of decisions that we make in a relationship between um, ourselves and the subject. And if we think about having to change those, that, that fundamental idea because we're confronted by a new subject, um, then that can get a little overwhelming. Um, and so, again, I, I try, to, try to think about drawing a figure the same way I think about drawing a landscape or a still life. It's about a set of decisions, and now things, it might trip us up a little bit more, like this figure is going to trip me up more <laughs> than a landscape because I just draw them less frequently. Um, but it's the idea that um, I kind of trust the process that kind of keeps me focused and motivated. If I think about it being, this drawing, this figure as being different from something else, then it, it sends me down this rabbit hole of self-doubt that <laughs> I try to ignore. So at least that's, that's my, my take on it. Um, uh, did you, oh, uh, and I will, I, I may have to add the link to the Degas documentary uh, set in um, a little bit later after the show. Um, so you might have to check back for that. Um, it's called Decoding Degas and it's, it's on Artist Network, but you may have to be a member in order to access it um, or, or to purchase it. Um, but you can find, um, I know we have the previews for it in our, um, on our YouTube channel. Okay. So kind of getting back to that, that point, I'm really glad you asked that, that question now, Art, um, because um, again, I'm going to try to rely on the steps that I've been talking through pretty much with every episode. Starting with a gesture, refining the proportions, building values, and then adding details, uh, you know, bringing the level of detail up to where we feel comfortable. Um, and then trust that in that process, I'll walk away with a better understanding of anatomy and that I'll have captured something about this subject. So part of the whole drawing process here is about solving this puzzle, the problem that, that this dancer presents. And so as using the drawing process, we better understand this subject. So that's kind of the goal for it. Um, how is the, uh, Thomas is asking, how is the Legion rag paper different from the Strathmore toned gray paper? Um, there, well, the, the Strathmore, I don't believe is a rag paper. Um, this is a, a cotton rag paper. Um, but in terms of the feel, they, they are somewhat similar. This is a little bit heavier um, and they're, there is kind of, there's a slightly a, a bit more tooth to it. It's, it's kind of hard to describe um, because I think both will hold the material well and I use the Strathmore a lot as you can see, look, if you look in the past episodes, I've used that a lot. But um, the, uh, the quality of the rag paper is, is such that, again, there's, there's kind of a softness to it. There's kind of a bit of a grain, but it's not kind of an imprinted texture that you might get with some charcoal papers. Um, so it's just got, a, like I said, a little bit more 
tooth to it, but I, um, it, but again, I wanted to kind of try to describe that tooth a little bit. It's, it's, you can kind of feel the rag quality is kind of the, the way I can kind of describe it. Whereas the Strathmore paper is a little bit more smooth um, overall, even though it does hold the material pretty well. So um, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so, you know, the thing that comes to mind now is that we talk a lot about in the series the difference between line and shape. And we often will build our subjects using shape as a priority, but I might switch to, to thinking about line for this. It just kind of calls to that, and I, and I, I know going into it that I really want to um, work on creating really delicate and fine lines the way Degas did. So um, this is where I feel I'm a little bit out of my element because I'm less practiced in this approach, so let's see where we go. Um, I first want to kind of establish the gesture. Uh, and if, if, you are, if you've been following this for a while, you know that what a gesture is, is a, an, initial, um, an initial stab at to kind of representing the subject. We're just kind of reacting to it. We're getting marks on the page very loosely, very quickly, kind of reacting to the subject, but we're not putting a whole lot of thought into the proportions or anything at this point. We just need information on the page because we know that with more information on the page, we can make specific decisions about the proportion. Uh, and I want to start to make, I want to make sure first that everything is going to fit on the page. So right now I'm actually drawing using that, that small thumbnail, that image is right below me. Uh, and I'm looking at this overhead projection. I'm seeing them side by side, and that's what I'm working from. I have the larger pr um, uh, display here on my left where I can see a big uh, version of the reference, but I'm using the small one. Um, if you squint your eyes, it can be helpful as well to simplify the subject. Um, right away, as I start to block in the, say here's the, the dress, I recognize that there's not enough space for me to, to fit the, the uh, fit everything. So that's the other role that a, a gesture plays is that it allows you to kind of visualize how everything is going to fit on the page before you commit to anything final. Because if I had kind of went in, if I had gone into it, you know, kind of finishing a spot first, and then, um, and then kind of moving down to another part, et cetera, keep going. If I were to kind of finish as I go, there's a good chance that it's not gonna fit properly. So at this stage, I just kind of encourage you to, to find your own path through the subject. You know, I'm, you may be um, thinking about the gesture a little bit different, differently than I am. I'm thinking about the axis for these legs, the basic angles, the basic forms, and again, I'm kind of treating them as, as lines, as contour lines. And one of the, uh, the roles that a gesture plays in your work is it's, it's helping you to orient yourself to the subject a little bit and to think ahead about what's going to trip you up. Um, so as I'm doing this, I'm trying to take mental note of some of the, the fine details that are going to um, give me trouble later on. So I wouldn't think too much about whether or not you're doing the gesture correctly. Again, it's just about getting information on the page. And so this is a combination of thinking about the contour. So here we're thinking about that, say the, the contour of kind of the abdomen and the chest area, and then an axis for that, that general angle of the arm. And you may be thinking purely about contour. 
Um, or you may be thinking purely about axis uh, or axes, but it it's all gonna it's all gonna be different for each of us. So I'm using an overhand grip like this. So you can see how far back I'm holding the pencil and that allows me to keep a light pressure because I want to be able to, um, I want to be able to erase these marks easily. All right, so I'm now I'm fairly confident that everything is going to fit. So now at this point, what I can do is essentially set my parameters. So if I've got the, the, this bottom line indicating where this lowest foot is going to be, this line up here representing the top of the hand, everything needs to fit between there. So now I've set my parameters and I know everything's gonna fit and I may need to adjust proportions within that. Um, I think this is probably enough for my gesture now and I can start to refine some of those proportions. One of the things that can be really helpful is to as you're going through these gestures is to start to observe intersections because those can become really key in terms of controlling those proportions. You can see where the arm on the right side of the photo intersects with the edge of the dress. Um, you can see where the abdomen intersects with this edge of the dress, where this leg intersects here, where they cross one another, where the two legs cross one another. Um, you can then also be thinking about plumb lines, so trying to connect the upper arm to this lower foot to observe that relationship. Um, and we're gonna solve those problems as we go through and we'll probably continue to make those adjustments. Again, this is all about, um, in, in our minds basically what we're doing is laying out all of these decisions um, and that, we, that we're going to be tackling throughout the drawing. Um, Let's see. Let's see, uh, Samson is saying, I recently did a drawing where I had not made certain that everything would fit properly and had to scratch and go for a larger paper. <laughs> yeah, that's so frustrating. I've done that so many times. Um, all right, oh, Klaus, Klaus Sahan, I'm glad that that was answered for you. Um, now, one of the advantages to working on toned paper and then toning the page even farther is I can start to now think um, subtractively as well. And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to maintain the, the focus on gesture at this stage, but it might be helpful to, uh, to observe the basic shape of light and shadow early on. And again, that's one of the things we talk about is um, in, in the series is how there, there, there comes a shift in your mind when the lines on the page go from being two-dimensional marks on the surface of the page to it becoming a three-dimensional object in your mind. And when you see it as a three-dimensional object, sometimes the proportions, uh, the perspective, things like that all kind of click into place. And that's one of the reasons why I, I generally start by thinking in terms of mass early um, is because it, uh, we understand the three-dimensional forms a little bit differently than when as, as lines. So as, as, we're going, as I'm going through this now, I'm, I'm intentionally trying to minimize the line now to see if it reveals anything about the form and the proportions of the subject. And all of this is going to be kind of adjusted. Um, so this is all still very kind of gestural in, uh, in terms of the, the overall mentality. Um, okay. But what, one of the, the reasons I'm, I'm bringing out the eraser is to, um, is to kind of remove some of the bulk from the drawing. And now I have so many lines from the initial gestures that it's starting to feel a little clumsy. 
and a little bit, a little bit heavy. So I'm, I'm trying to then again, kind of remove some of the bulk from the drawing. Um, but overall, I'm feeling pretty good about the basic, the basic proportions, the basic gesture. So I'm just kind of going back and forth, looking at the drawing and the reference um, to see if anything major kind of stands out. Um, and this is, again, one of the things we talk about a lot is the importance of flipping your drawing vertically and, and evaluating the proportions that way because everything looks very different from this angle. When I look up and I see that overhead projection, then it's, um, it's a very different um, representation of the subject and the proportions look a bit better. Um, so, okay. Let's think through what, do I, what would be most helpful right now. Um, I'm just gonna kind of wipe down some of the, again, remove some of the bulk and some of these lines. This is about kind of tackling the drawing over and over and over again. So in my mind, what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm taking multiple stabs at drawing this figure. Each stab, it gets a little bit more specific. Um, and so what you, what you saw me do that there is to kind of wipe things down to help unify the mark. And now we're gonna go through the whole figure again. And then we're gonna wipe it down, we're gonna go through the whole figure again. And I found that in doing that, I arrive at a greater degree of specificity and correctness um, because it's, it, it's like, it's an equivalent of, you know, really anything you do, the more you do it, the better you get, right? And so, um, and I, and I need that time. I need to be able to draw this a lot in order to really understand the subject rather than kind of lay it out and then follow a process where I'm kind of finishing as I go. So, um, all right. So now I wanna think through some of the basic proportions that you might find helpful. Uh, so if again, if I set the, the hand up here, there's the wrist right here. You drop a plumb line down and see how it relates to then the torso, that curve around the abdomen, follow down and then see where it relates to the, the heel down here. And then in doing so, that's creating a, a positive and negative space. So you have the positive space being the arm, and then you have this negative space in here. You have a negative space in here, and that will all help you to find the correct angles uh, of of those various features. So you're again, you're running a, a, a plumb line down from the wrist to help you identify the specific angles. And then, so if I, so it looks like. This is pretty close to accurate here. So I'm using some angle sighting here now. So what angle sighting is, is I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the form, breaking it down into a sequence of, of general angles and you can kind of carry the, those observations from the reference to the drawing. So if you close one eye, hold your pencil up to the specific angle that you're targeting. In this case, is this section of the lower abdomen. Um, carry it over, place it directly on top of the drawing. It'll help you to kind of lock in some of those, those proportions and those, those angles. And I find this really key to correcting and like false perceptions and assumptions about the subject. So what I mean by that is looking at this arm, there's such a strong verticality to it. It's going straight up, but it's not perfectly vertical. There is an angle to it. And so there can be some tension between that initial impulse and that initial reaction to the subject and what it's actually doing. And so using angle sighting, using plumb lines, things like that, helps to, um, helps to really kind of lock in on what's happening with the subject.
hopefully that makes sense. Um, what what is challenging here is that we also kind of are aware of what's hidden. So I understand the structure of the shoulder a bit from the pose, but it's obscured by the head. Um, and so I wanna make sure that I get that correct angle between the shoulders that's kind of obscured. Check out the angle of the dress. This can come down a little bit more steep here. And, and allow these lines to really kind of overlap. I almost think about them as being kind of on rails, right? So if we have this angle here, that angle can move up or down. We have this angle here that can move left or right. And so we're, we're putting in where you know our initial response to it, um, and, but kind of in the back of my head, I'm also thinking about what uh, the, the fact that it can be um, it can be moved. So I'm going to find the central axis to that abdomen. You know, she's she's really kind of arching her back. And I'm kind of starting from the inside working out in a way, and the, more from the center now. I, you know, I've kind of given myself enough information with the hand here um, to help orient myself. But now that I'm starting here, I'm gonna work my way back out and start to adjust from there. Um, and, and that you might find that helpful as well as to, to think about these as kind of inside out drawing, starting from the inside, working your way out to the edges rather than the starting of the edges and then working your way in. Uh, Brent does art. I recommend Sakura Sumo Grip Erasers. They work great with graphite, a charcoal, and colored pencil. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I have to, I should try those out. I know Sakura is a good, good company. Um, Oh, Marie, I really like that comment that you have. Your process of adding and subtracting reminds me of hand building in ceramics. I'm so glad you mentioned that because that is very much how I, I think about it. Um, and it's you know, nothing you know, particularly unique. There are a lot of, a lot of artists who think that way. Um, but I like to think about every mark I make on the page as being movable, as being flexible, malleable. Um, it is a very tactile and, and kind of sculptural process in a way. And one way I like to think about it is almost like making marks in sand that you can kind of move around um, rather than them being kind of permanent. And we, we often um, can get, you kind of fall into the trap of being precious with our marks, especially too early. Um, and it makes sense because that it, it, it's a very good feeling when you make a mark that you love. Um, but that, that preciousness can sometimes be inhibiting. All right, so now I'm working down. I'm fairly happy with what's happening in here for now. And I'm evaluating the overall gesture. Does it have movement energy to it? Because uh, that's, I want to make sure that there is some kind of life to the drawing. Uh, and so far I'm feeling pretty good about it. You may, you may choose to actually kind of amplify, exaggerate some of those proportions um, to, to really kind of accentuate some of that movement. Uh, I, I'm going to try to be a, a bit more precise and kind of follow the proportions of the, uh, of the reference more closely, but um, you should, you know, kind of go follow your impulses with this. Um, I'm kind of, I'm working my way up to drawing the legs and what I am evaluating now is I want to make sure that this distance here feels okay. So I'm going to use comparative measuring here. So I'm going to take, what's a good proportion? Uh, 
All right, so there's this, there's this very subtle scene here. And then her, her chin. I'm gonna take this height here and compare it to then the distance from there to the bottom of the dress and see how, see how they relate. So this distance here, if this is her chin, if that's her chin there, I'm taking this measurement and comparing that. Um, in order to do that, I need to make sure that I'm, that I have the chin placed properly. So I might have to come down just a little bit. So I'm kind of doing a quick check in, where am I relative to other key features? So her, her chin really comes in line with her kind of armpit right there. Um, now I don't have the scale worked out there, but I wanna, I wanna figure out where it, that chin is relative to this bend here. So that is actually feeling pretty good so if I take, again, if I take this, this dimension and I carry this down, that means that this dress line here actually has to come down a little bit farther. I didn't draw it quite wide enough there. It's gonna clean this up a little bit so I can see a little bit more of this form. And as I'm making these marks, I might as well be kind of aligning them with the, um, the texture of the dress. Let's see. And I also want to make sure that I'm, that this line here is appropriate for the, the proportions. And I think, yeah, this, this needs to come up a little bit, so that's gonna affect things. So if I take this proportion again, come down, that's a bit more accurate. Now this is still, this is all gonna be very general down in here, but it gives me enough that I can start to place that leg. Cause there's so much being obscured here. We have to kind of use our imagination to see how things kind of fit together. One of the things that comes to mind is how this leg here becomes an extension of this angle here and that, that curve and that really kind of anchors the, the pose um, and, and you can kind of see how this becomes really one, one mark, one, one motion. And so I, I wanna be thinking both about the, the details and how they fit together as a whole. So right now I'm prioritizing the whole, uh, um, the whole proportion and then we'll get into the details. So if I don't get the whole um, kind of form figured out, then those details will not fit properly. Um, and if, if, and again, anybody can call out anything that's wrong here. Um, I saw some great um, uh, comments by Klaus, thank you for those. Uh, and anybody who's new, um, th this, is, this show is really all about sharing ideas and observations, so feel free to share what's happening in your own drawing. See anything in mind that could use some adjustment um, that can be helpful as well. Um, okay, kind of back to this, I, I'm kind of jumping all around. What's happening though is that this is the problem I'm trying to solve. 
I need a little bit more information in other parts of the drawings in order to solve some of these problems. So for example, I need to make sure that the hand is placed generally so then I can use that as a point of reference for this foot. Um, and in order to do that, I need to check this angle. And in order to check that, I'm comparing it to the, the torso, I'm comparing it to this. So everything becomes connected and that's part of the whole drawing process. When I talked earlier about um, the, the decisions we make as artists, we make these decisions no matter what the subject. So if, um, even if you've never drawn a figure before, if you rely on these steps and these decisions that you're making, hopefully you'll end up with something that approximates what you're observing and it gives you a deeper appreciation for the subject. So if the, if the hand is here, kind of the, the tip of the hand, and I'm not gonna draw the hand, I'm just kind of reacting to the, the angles that I'm seeing with these little flicks. The foot here is directly below and to the left. So this becomes kind of the bottom of the foot. And so I'm thinking back and forth now between the overall axis of this leg and then thinking about the, the, the contour angles as related to that. So it's both ha that's happening all kind of simultaneously. So in this case, yeah, we have the, the overall axis to this leg but then you can see that particular angle as you move from the ankle up the calf. And we have this really, this pronounced curve to the foot. Now, let's see. Now, I mentioned earlier that, you know, this foot needs to be a bit to the left of the hand. And right now, they're directly above one another. So the question is, is the hand placed correctly or does the foot need to move over? Um, and my, uh, my initial thought is that the hand actually needs to come over a little bit more. Um, and this is where it can be helpful to have uh, kind of multiple versions of the reference. Uh, you know, so I have the small one, I have the very small thumbnail, and I also have a large one here. Um, and the large one is gonna be really used for details. When I switch to looking at the large one for these basic gestures, and the basic proportions, it really throws me off. Um, so I need to be relying more on the uh, on the, the small one, the, the small thumbnail. And I do think this needs to come over a little bit more. So I kind of have to do a combination of both. Move this foot over and move that hand out. Now, kind of getting back to the thought about anatomy is I, you know, I did take classes in anatomy it was specifically for, uh, for art making purposes, so for painting and drawing. And that was many years ago and I remembered very little. <laughs> so um, I don't know the names of various parts or really the nuances of how the musculature all um, interacts or the, um, you know, the relationship between the bone and the muscle. But once we get into that, all of that to me, it kind of comes through the drawing process rather than it being in place uh, in the, on the outset, you know, not starting with that understanding, but arriving at the understanding and the, and the discovery of the form.
I find I'm, I'm kind of fixating on this, I need to move on. But I'm happy with the way that's feeling like it connects. Now this leg is really tricky because there's such a pronounced curve and bend in that, that leg and that rotation around the hip that it's tricky So what I'm gonna look at now is, I wanna pay attention to this overlap here, how much of that leg, the front, the front leg overlaps the back leg. And I mentioned earlier, paying attention to the intersections. So where do these lines intersect the edge of the dress? In particular, relative to the upper body. Does that feel accurate? And then this, yeah, that feels about accurate. So looking at this relationship here, and we can carry that up to the shoulder. So this right here, this intersection with the dress is directly below the shoulder, which seems to, seems to play out in the drawing. So it's gradually coming together. Um, we're still thinking about correcting proportions, so we haven't gotten into any of the nuances, those subtle curves. Um, as, I, as I work on this leg, I wanna make sure I get that general axis correct, and that feels pretty close. Um, and then align it with the, the inner and outer contour edges. Uh, draw up a, a horizontal axe guide across here to see where this toe intersects with that foot. And then this foot really becomes uh, horizontal. Kind of in my way there. There we go, yeah, so this, this line here, the bottom of the foot really becomes a horizontal mark. And then I can place the toe right below this knee here. Now something seems a bit off there, that feels too, too long. So what am I, what do I need to do here? Ah, that angle of this, that angle here needs to be a little bit steeper. So that comes in like that. So I bring that heel in. All right. So I'm happier now with the proportions. And so far, this is a little bit better than the first stabs I took at it earlier in the week. Um, and then, oh, Tom Thomas is saying the negative shape around the model is another guy to draw correct angles. Yes. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I think that's really an important thing. As I was mentioning earlier, a one way to help see those negative spaces is to drop a plumb line down from these shapes and it starts to close off the sections. Because sometimes when we start to see this as a negative shape, it becomes a little bit overwhelming. It's such a big shape. Um, you can dial it in by using plumb lines uh, a bit uh, to kind of just make things a little bit smaller. All right, now, um, now one of the things you, you may have noticed from a, like a lot of most figure drawing books, things like that, talk about the, the proportion using the head as a standard unit comparing the height of the head to the overall height of the body. Now I haven't done that yet, but I think that's a good place to go next. So if I take a measurement aligning this part of the pencil with the top of the head on the reference, sliding my finger down to the chin, I can compare that to then the height of the arm above. It's about one and a half. So if I take this measurement here, carry it up, I get one and a half, so that's pretty close. So this right here, this mark represents kind of the crown of the head. This mark down here represents the chin. Um, and so I'm taking that measurement, comparing that to the length of the arm above, and then from the shoulder to the elbow down here. So the shoulder to the elbow, that puts the elbow right about here. And 
and then from the elbow down to the knuckles. So that puts the knuckles right about here. And I can take that same measurement and I can compare it to the torso. So the head, from the top of the head to the chin is the same as to here. So take that and that's pretty close, but I think this needs to come up a little bit. I think that's an observation class you had made earlier. So the torso seems a little bit long. And so if we take that, the height of the head here, carry that down, this part right here should be up just a bit. And that shortens it. Um, and as, you st as this starts to come together, very minor adjustments can have a fairly large impact on the, on the proportions um, and the way we interpret the, the figure. Gonna get that shadow in there. All right, now I'm gonna take that same, the, the height of the head, compare that to other features. Um, so that height here is the same as from the knee to the ankle. That's, that's correct. And this height here, um, it takes two of those distances to equal the length for, of the, this leg here. So one, two, so something is off there that I need to correct. So one, two, let's see. Take that measurement, height of the head, from one to, actually it's pretty darn close. So I think I'm, I'm in the ballpark here in terms of those proportions. Um, if I kind of indicate some of the, uh, some of the environment in here, that might also be helpful because now I have a line here that, that connects these elements through the legs here. So how's everybody doing? Everybody else following along? Anybody stuck? Is this making sense? Anybody have a completely different approach? That's what this is all about. So um, feel free to share your own approach. I'm gonna kind of minimize the background a little bit, but I wanna be thinking in terms of value to some degree. To kind of darken in some of that, that background. So kind of erase out some of the, the dress here. Now I know this is all gonna get kind of, you can, it's all gonna get dirty again. That's all right. I'm not being precious with uh, the, the drawing yet. It's too early in the state, in this drawing to be concerned with being precious for me. So, but I think it's helpful to do a little bit of subtractive drawing there's a, that light on the shoulder is pretty pronounced, so I wanna indicate that. And I'm saving the, the head for later. And if, if, it, it might be helpful for you to, to try your best to think about these as basic shapes um, rather than thinking about it as, you know, the various body parts, as a head, as shoulders, and. Um, the arms, things like that, because when we, when we think about those, we can often then open ourselves to be working from the, that symbol system, something that we've talked about before, these kind of preconceived ideas about how things should be drawn. All right, how does this look? Does everybody feel like, these overall proportions are, are working out. 
Anybody see something that's just wildly inaccurate? All right. Uh, Mad Moments Go saying it's looking very close to the reference. Excellent. Um, all right. Uh, Tom Thomas, the left foot is at a slight angle, moving the heel back. Still working on a good cross contour gesture. Awesome. Yeah, I think this is kind of throwing me off here. I need to kind of clean this up. Really make sure that this this heel is accurate looking at that, that plumb line. And it feels pretty close to it. Because the, the, the placement of this, that's really where a lot of the weight is being uh, transferred to. The relationship between that and the torso is what creates a sense of movement. Um, and so I do wanna make sure I get that correct. So actually this might have to come over a little bit. Bring that leg over, be used in use some subtractive drawing. And uh, see how that feels, there we go. Yeah, by br bringing that leg over, that's a bit more accurate in it. Um, and it, it creates more of that movement. Again, that, that kind of forward push. All right. So with that established, let's see. Soy-based Jeremy, yes, this, this, it does look, it is tedious. <laughs> it is a bit tedious, so. But that's, I guess that's what drawing is all about. We're trying to solve this problem of this dancer, try to understand the form of the dancer. Um, and it takes some time to get there. Uh, but I feel like we are getting there. Um, now the head is, the head's a really tricky thing. At this point, you know, if you've got marks on your page that are distracting, it, it might be worth it to take some time to clean up the excess marks, because I think we can start to move into more of the finishing stages now. All right, so kind of keeping in mind the, the same process of working from the core outward, I think that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm going to kind of work this edge along in here. Now this is again toned paper, so I know I'm gonna be able to pull out some of the lights. Uh, so what I'm gonna do to refine that edge is I'm blocking in this background, generally stopping short of that line, and then I'm gonna use my eraser to create that sharp edge. Um, and this is where I'm really, uh, I'm using, again, using the side of the pencil to do this. It just makes it easier to lift some of the material, some of the, the graphite off. So as we kind of work through the figure, we're gonna be working back and forth between using line and shape to create that. So in this case, we really used shape to create that edge. So rather than drawing that line as much, we kind of established that earlier, and now we're refining it as a shape. Maybe carry some of that value through here. But then as we move up the arm, may switch to this line to capture that edge. Um, and what you might find helpful is to, rather than to kind of start at one point and work your way up, kind of bounce around that edge. So I'll start by kind of indicating the elbow there, and then maybe the wrist, and then work my way down 
and with that overall angle being established, the overall axis, I can now focus on the, the more subtle nuances to the curves, some of the details here. And what makes, like what makes Degas so effective is if you really follow along the curve of an arm or a leg, he's paying close attention to how the convex and the concave lines interact with one another because that's what indicates the structure of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the figure. Um, and so much can be conveyed by being sensitive to those edges. So as we're following along this, say this inside edge of the arm, we're moving from kind of softer muscle to kind of bonier elements at the elbow back into kind of musculature and the right curve to the line can convey all that. So for example, there's this curve that comes out here of that, that muscle on the forearm and then the bicep interacts, it intersects with that. And even though it's very subtle, again, that's what ultimately conveys the, the anatomy of the subject. As we come through here, again, we have this kind of this muscle here on the forearm that she's got. The bone of the, what is it, the radius or the ulna um, becomes close, comes closer to the surface here. And so there's a, there's an interaction between uh, the curve of the muscle and then that, that harder edge of the bone. And, and I believe that if, if, you know, through those kind of observations and putting attention on those subtle interactions between those curves, you arrive at a better understanding of the anatomy. And in that way, you don't necessarily need to have that understanding in advance. The drawing process itself helps to reveal that. Now as I look at this hand, I'm gonna to try to suggest the hand, and what I'm focusing on is this curve on that thumb. You can see I'm not closing off, I'm not indicating the end of that thumb, and then moving to this angle here between the thumb and the forefinger. And then that angle on the top of the hand And we'll just let that, that hand stay as it is for now. Now I can kind of clean this up with the eraser, thinking about the shape of the light. And you can start to indicate some of the, uh, some of the muscles there through the shape of the shadow and light. And when you're doing that, you can uh, try to observe that line of termination and so what that is, is it's the point on that arm where the light transitions into shadow. Uh, and if you follow down this arm, it's not one straight line, it's modulating based on the structure of that arm, the, the muscles, the bone, etc. So that can convey a certain amount of information there. So really observe, you know, if we follow along here, there are some places where it becomes more pronounced, and then there are some places where it becomes more diffused. Okay. And then, uh, so uh, Tom's saying, if I might suggest, draw the eyes as a separate drawing to reveal the structure. Yeah, I think you know, when we get to the, the facial features, that's gonna be a, a, a tricky one. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that you, you mentioned that. So that's in response to soy based Jeremy, my fear is messing up the eyes. So we'll, we'll get to that and I'll kind of give my, my take on it and see if it works for you. Um, I, in my mind, this is really about the, f the figure as a whole. Um, you know, when I, when I first look at this drawing, the, the eyes are something that I go to really last, right? It's all about the movement of the whole body. That, and I, so I'm gonna let the, the drawing kind of express that. 
So I'm gonna just kind of give myself the, an indication of the axis of the head here. And try to understand the, uh, the basic plane for that for now. All right, so now when we come down here, we have this kind of strap to the dress, and then we have, we have the, again, that kind of armpit, and that, that muscle there, and there's a distinct overlap with this edge. Kind of refine this a little bit. So I wanna make sure that I get the, the basic angles correct. And then there's all these little folds and such in the dress that we can kind of capture later. Uh, now, one thing that you know, we wanna be aware of is there's the, the cylindrical volume form of, of the torso. It's not, not really a cylinder, but you know, think about it as a three-dimensional object. And there's a, 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 a plane here across the chest, and then it wraps around. This line here on her dress kind of wraps, it's, it's a very complex form. So it's wrapping around the form of the figure, but it also has its own shape. And so um, really kind of understanding how those curves kind of fit together um, can be really helpful. Um, so there's an overall angle that you wanna make sure you get, but um, but there's also kind of a subtle curve. Once you get that, that angle, you can start to break it down even to more precise curves. Um, now right in here, I feel like this line is a little bit heavy, so what I'm gonna do is darken in that background and let those marks kind of consume the, the contour line there. Try to get rid of that line there. And this is where now I can start to indicate the shadows of the folds in the dress. So using this, the side of the pencil, I'm just kind of, mostly just kind of tapping on the surface, trying to see those curves. And so thinking about that front plane, the angles here, then transitioning into the lines that wrap around the hips there. Uh, now in this way, I'm gonna refine this line along in here. And you may find it effective to um, really break up your marks as you follow along the edge. And just kind of kind of sneak up on those lines. You can be, be gentle with them. I know for me, I, I went through this phase where I felt like I really had to be super clear and explicit with the, with the line work. Um, and I was losing any sense of kind of nuance or subtlety when I did that. So I'm trying to pay attention to that. It almost, try to say as much as I can with as little as possible. All right, so as we work up here, I can kind of focus more on the, the, the structure in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of focusing on the form here and then working my way out to the edge um, rather than the, the, from the edge inward. So there's this kind of dark shadow being cast by the, that, that armpit there. The shoulder gets bright here on the top. Let me erase that out. because I can see generally where that, that line should go. But I'm giving myself some sort of indication of that musculature. And then working my way out. But 
Like, and I think as we as we get into the the into that musculature, you know, when as a, as I'm observing it, you can see this line here in, in the shoulder that transitions down into the bicep, and then there's this bit here of the back that intersects quite um, uh, quite strongly. And it's that overlap that's really important in terms of creating that, that structure. Kind of darken in there. And then kind of soften. And now I, I notice that as I'm, as I'm starting to really look closely at the figure, I'm losing my awareness on the overall value relationships. And so what was happening here is that I could see that I had pumped up the contrast too much in that area. It needs to all be in shadow. All right, I'm gonna come back in here kind of indicate the, the rib cage there. And then that shadow being cast down from the neck, indicate that. And then soy-based Jeremy, a quick tip, use an unused paintbrush to get rid of the eraser pieces, plus a kneaded eraser would help. I have my kneaded eraser. I'm just not using it. That's a good, those are good points. Um, it's funny, I, I, I just realized that I had this in my hand and when you pointed that out, I'm like, oh yeah, I have one. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so Sokis, you're actually doing this drawing for a friend. That's awesome. Um, I hope you share it when you're done at Artist Network here. Now, okay, so what I need to do is I need to reconnect with that overall axis to this arm and feel like I'm, I kind of lost that bend. Um, God, in the muscles right in here, that tricep is pretty awesome. Um, there's such really cool detail in there. So really observe how you know, we have you know, the one muscle here in that shoulder moving down into the tricep and then it becomes you know, closer to the bone as we get down to the elbow. Um, and you wanna kind of indicate all of those kind of subtle edges. Like I'm using that word subtle a lot in this. <laughs> There's so much subtlety to this. Um, now down in, in here, there's that dress that overlaps that forearm. So what I'm gonna do is actually erase this out here. And I think that's really important for locking that arm um, because then that also reestablishes the, um, the, the twist in her, her torso there. So as I get to the wrist, there's like, you can see that, that bony part to her wrist um, it's so small uh, in my drawing. It's taking up such a small part of the drawing. Um, I don't want to get too heavy with it. Um, and then, so I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna arrive at that by creating a little uptick on this end and then bring the hand in right underneath it. Um, so it's a, actually a broken edge uh, and that's intentional because I don't want that to feel too heavy. Um, and it, this whole edge here is all broken up. It's not one continuous line. Uh, and I think that's gonna be helpful ultimately to, to creating a sense of movement and, and making it feel natural. And as we get into the hands, one of the, the things that I like to focus on is this, is this gap between the thumb and the forefinger, trying to get that shape right. Um, and that can go a long way towards um, indicating the, the pose of the hand. So 
So I don't know if I'm gonna do much more to the hand than that. Although I do wanna get more of that light on the top of the hand here. I don't know, I'll come back to the hand a little bit later. The hands are tough, <laughs> but it all comes down to, uh, you know, finding that balance between giving enough information to state what is happening with the hand and simplifying it and not overdoing it. Uh, so I'm gonna darken up in here. I wanna allow that, that edge, that line to get lost a little bit. All right, so I'm feeling good about that. Overall, I think the pose is working out pretty well. I'm gonna come back to the head later. I'm gonna leave the edge of the dress for now and then move down to these legs here. Uh, Maria saying, dang, this is hard. <laughs> it is, my brain is shot, um, it's, but it's, it's getting there, so. Um, let's see. And then soy based Jeremy, you say you prefer charcoal over graphite. Um, that's, I'm glad you shared that, uh, and I'm kind of curious which one, you know, if, if you can articulate why that is for, for us. I, I think I prefer charcoal over graphite as well. I switch it up in this show. So I think we did, did we do, I think we did charcoal last week, and so and we're doing graphite this week, and I heard from one of you that, you know, to asking to kind of focus on describing, um, you know, really how to work with compressed and vine charcoal together. And so we'll do that next week, we'll work with charcoal. But I'd be kind of curious what you all think um, about the two and if you prefer one over the other, why? Um, I find it valuable to kind of switch back and forth because I think there's sometimes something we can learn from graphite that we can apply to charcoal and vice versa. Okay, so as we're, as I'm working down this leg, again, I'm feeling pretty confident in the overall axis. There's so much happening in this leg. So we have the knee here that gets a little bit harder. There's kind of more bone hap you know, coming to the surface there. Um, we have these really amazing muscles. There's this one muscle that kind of wraps around the knee, interacting with then this muscle above it. Again, I'm not, uh, I'm not all that well trained in anatomy, so I'm, I'm just saying muscle and bone. And if I know a body part, I'll, I'll try to say it correctly, but um, don't hold me to any of this. Um, but then, so this, this knee kind of comes in as a form a little bit on, on top of this. So the calf muscle kind of wraps around behind it. and then you can kind of break that calf muscle down into a sequence of marks. Let's see. So like right in here, it almost becomes vertical. And as we, as we move across, you can really see that line of termination. You know, it's much more clear at the knee, around the kneecap there, because it's a kind of a harder surface. And as we move down the shin, then you have this really pronounced muscle here. And then that line of termination kind of jogs over to the right a little bit. And that can sometimes be something that influences our interpretation of the overall axis. You can see that this angle becomes pretty steep along that line of termination, but we understand the axis of the bone to be um, at kind of a slightly different angle. Um, Brenda's saying lots more value, or more control with graphite. Um, 
And then Thomas, I love what you just said there. Um, I feel like I'm playing whack-a-mole. I get one measurement right, but it throws off something else. That's exactly it. That's a great way of saying it. That's what makes it so hard, is that it's all about the relationships between things. So if you change one thing, it's gonna have to change another. Uh, and it, oh, you never get used to it. But I, I guess that's part of the problem solving that I really enjoy about drawing. Um, But that it can yeah that that's it in the nutshell right there whack a mole, um, and and sometimes what you know what I'll do is I'll I'll kind of forget to go back and, and check things so I'm like oh this leg is too long so I'll shorten it up without thinking about how it might be throwing everything else off and uh, so I'm really glad you mentioned that it's like, I think it's a good call for um, everybody to kind of remind you know, ourselves that. If you're changing something, just do a quick check and make sure that you're, you're not affecting something else in your drawing. All right, so as I'm looking at this leg, I'm just kind of evaluating um, its form. I want to. I want to make sure that it, it, in some way, suggests the bend in the knee. It's really hard to see from this angle in the reference photo because the knee is coming. That leg is really kind of straight on, and so with that bend, it's kind of hinging on the knee, but in in line um, with this axis here. But I. I, I want to make sure that the drawing, in some way, kind of captures that bend. So that's what I'm looking at now. And now I'm gonna go to this leg back in here, kind of focusing on this intersection point. And I think what I wanna do is there's this really, on the reference photo, there's this beautiful light edge to this leg. And I wanna get to that, I think. So I'm gonna use my eraser to draw with here. Um, you know, I'm thinking again, just very, it's just as though I'm working with essentially a white pencil. I'm, I'm thinking about the relationship between the curves. And now, as I look at the reference photo, there's some bounce light coming in on this side. Um, and so I'm gonna, I need to try to figure out how I'm gonna address that. Cause this is, this is not necessarily about light and shadow, but I'm using light and shadow to express the form. So I'm gonna, this is a really strong shadow core here. Again, thinking about that line of termination, the path that this shadow takes as we, and we have this larger mass here, we get into the knee, and then as we come down the calf muscle, it kind of makes this kind of jog to the right, and then down here. And then it's a fairly soft transition And then what I can do is I've got this edge here that right now is pretty pretty fuzzy. So I'm going to I'm going to actually start with that background here, block in some of the values, and work my way up to that edge. And I want to minimize the line. I'm doing that intentionally because I want to create a separation between this leg here and the, that's in front and this one that's behind. Those lines are actually going to project forward. Um, and so if I create heavy lines here along that edge, it's going to bring that leg forward as well. And it's going to be difficult to interpret kind of the, the three-dimensional spatial relationships between those forms. So I want to be really careful with how I approach line in this back leg. And if anything, kind of let it be more diffused um, than anything. Because already, like this right in here, this foot, it feels a little bit too heavy. So I think what I need to do, that again, that line has become so strong that I need to get rid of that line, maybe drop down the value back in here, 
and create a little bit of that shadow that's on the floor. And that helps to kind of knock the contrast down a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna actually keep going here, darken this. I'm gonna, I'm paying attention to the kind of the direction of the marks because kind of, it's kind of dangerous when I'm running them vertically. I should run them more horizontally to align with the horizontal nature of the ground plane. But it's all what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is just kind of knock down that line a little bit. I'm looking at those those elements there. So if I were to cover over, so you can see one of my old, one of my first attempts at the drawing did not go well. Um, but if I cover this over, if I look just down in here, does it feel like this is in front of that? It's basically what I'm asking myself. Because um, that's kind of important in capturing that pose. And you know, with that, then I can come back in and I can sharpen up this edge, maybe with a little line, but just keep it very subtle. And then you kind of sneak up on it, you know, attack a little bit of the line, move on to another spot, evaluate. See if we need a little bit more to try to find that balance. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that for now. Um, I'm gonna indicate a little bit more of the dress. I'm gonna be a little bit gestural with this because I, I think it might help to create a sense of movement here. So what's most important is trying to see the overall structure of the, of the dress. Um, and the, the angles, there's kind of this radiating quality out from, uh, from the, the center. But I don't, want it, I don't want it to feel like stripes, so I just want to be very subtle with this. And I think there's the, the quality of the edges helps to create that three-dimensional form. So this is like a disc that wraps around the dancer. And so as we move from left to right, we're moving back in space as well. So as we're moving over back in here, these marks get closer together as, as we're looking around that corner. And then as we, as we come in front here, they start to, those forms start to open up because we're looking at them more directly. We wrap around here and again, they start to tighten up as they wrap around and we're looking across that form a bit more. Uh, now this is where you may decide to spend a little bit more time really becoming more precise with that edge. Um, I, you know, I think I just wanna make it fairly gestural, have fun with some of the mark making. But if you hold in your mind that the understanding of the, the way these, these forms tend to radiate out from the center, it can be helpful in kind of capturing that gesture. And then right in here, there's that little bit of dress that kind of pokes up there. And then there's this I don't want to be too sharp with that because that needs to be behind. That's like that actually that portion of the dress I really didn't even notice until just now. So that suggests to me that it's perhaps less important than some other elements. Now this shadow here becomes important. You know, as the light comes in from this angle, the, she's actually casting a shadow. And there's this bend right in here that is helpful for creating the structure of the dress and really allowing that arm to sink into the dress there. Okay. Um, so this is kind of built up again. I'm gonna come back in with this with the white charcoal in a little bit. So 
I'm gonna clean that up just a touch. Uh, now to the face, let's see. Um, I'm thinking about the face and I just said now to the face and I'm working on the foot. <laughs> the heck. Um, but no, my brain is thinking about the face. I'm just not ready to draw it yet. So I'm moving to something that's a little bit easier to tackle and I'm kind of working out some of the, the tension that's building up in my muscles and in my mind. Um, so. Um, what I'm, I'm trying to do is, again, my mind is on, we're thinking about the, the face right now and what I wanna do, but I'm, I need to just clear the head. Um, when you can, like you, you see what I just did here, so working on that background, I really wanna make sure that whatever shadow I place here is behind the dancer. So I'm bringing it right over that edge and then cutting it back out using the eraser to bring that leg forward. You want that clean overlap um, to create the, that spatial definition there. Um, I haven't used the blending stump at all, but I'll get to that. Um, Oh yeah, the skirt is longer over the thighs. Adele is saying the skirt is longer over the thighs. Yeah, that's right, because there's I kind of there's this uh, there are these multiple layers here. And I was working on that inner layer and I haven't come back to work on that outer layer. That's I'm glad you did that. It gives me something else to think about before I move on to the really tricky part, which is the face. Um, so hopefully that's a little bit better. I'm not getting that. I'm not getting the overall form quite right there, so I'll have to come back and I think adjust it. And I think actually this needs to come down here. Thank you for that, Adele. That was a good observation that I kind of missed. Um, okay. I mean it for real, I'm gonna work on the face now. So, uh, all right, thank you, Tom, for the comments. Um, uh, let's see. I'm just seeing some of the some of the all caps stuff looks like some comments. So I'm just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Um, oh, and then Brent does art. Are you going to use a carbon pencil for your darker values? I may come in a little bit later to, to kind of pull out more definition on the lines using using that carbon pencil. What am I still in the three B? Um, all right. So what do I want to do here? I've kind of established that axis, but that's kind of clumsy. I'm actually going to switch to the blending stump for now. And I'm gonna pick up some material with this. Uh, so, and to help with that, I'm gonna kinda of work through some of the other areas that I've um, established. Um, and I need to get this shadow. So I wanna get the angle of the chin Correct. This is just too, there's too, too much bulk in that part of the drawing. I'm gonna thin that out a little bit and I wanna get that shadow here. Um, so, but I don't want it to be a line. So I'm gonna visualize that pa path and then try to create these hatch marks that, that follow along that path right there. And that starts to create that three-dimensional quality of the head. So I'm kind of building the structure kind of leading up to the head. And I'm gonna kind of arrive at the features later. So I wanna first establish the, the light and shadow on the head here. I'm gonna go back to this blending stump as I'm, I can pick up kind of some of that material. 
need a little bit more, because then I'm actually, I think I'm gonna capture the features using the blending stump. I'll use the kneaded eraser for this. I love this, I love this definition here on that shoulder. It's really a cool, cool thing to see. Um, what's hard about that is that, you know, the, the things that are most interesting tend to, uh, I tend to overstate in the drawing. And so, uh, I need to just be, make sure I'm sensitive to that and subtle. Uh, there's this nice little shadow right under here on the arm, on the wrist there. Um, so uh, still, I'm still thinking about the head, right? But I am, I, I recognize that I need to have a little bit more material on my blending stump. So I'm taking this time to contribute to the form of the drawing while loading this blending stump with material. All right, so as we come in here, I'm gonna squint, squint at the reference, and then try to, try to observe the shape of the eye socket. And my blending stump's a little, a little wimpy right now in the end, so <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I need to give it a little bit more uh, structure there. And I prefer to use a blending stump for this because it's a little bit more gentle. It helps me to not overstate the features here. So then there's this line down here, a shadow down the side of the head, down the nose. I'm gonna evaluate. So in this, what I, when I'm looking at it this way, right up close to it, it's, it, it appears one way. When I look at the, the, the smaller um, projection of the drawing, that what you're seeing, then it's, um, I see it a little a little bit differently. All right, so I, what I would recommend doing is be prepared to tackle these features numerous times. Um, you know, you can, you can kind of go for it, wipe it out, go for it again, wipe it out, go for it again. Um, because it, it, for me, I think it, it works best when, um, when, when there's an efficiency to the marks, right? You know, so you're able to capture more about the subject with fewer marks. And it takes some time to do that. You know, people like, you look at somebody like John Singer Sargent and there's a fluidity to his marks. It doesn't mean that he got it got those things right off the bat. There isn't an immediacy to it. Like you, you might try it, wipe it down, try it again, wipe it down. You may be a hundred attempts to get that one mark that works. Um, so, but I'm trying to focus more on structure of light and shadow. So I've got the overall shape here. Now you can start to break it down into smaller marks. And and then step back and evaluate, see how does it read. Now, you know, when I look at the reference photo, and if I squint my eyes, the, the tip of the nose is, is pretty, pretty subtle. I don't really see it very clearly, so I'm not gonna state it if I don't really see it. Instead, what I see a bit of the, is the mouth So kind of look for the axis. And try to sneak up on it. I think what I need to do is 
to sharpen up this shadow just a little bit more. I think that's that's ultimately the most important thing is getting that, that shadow shape under the chin. Get that top of the head in there. And then there's the hairline here which is really tricky. So try to try to think about it as an abstract shape because her headdress there is really a complex form that has its own shape. Oh no, battery exhausted. This may be it, folks. I think my battery's dead, even though it's plugged in. Um, let's see. All right, so I think, <laughs> I think we're all done. Um, let me see if I can get a few marks with the white on there to kind of showcase the the white, but I think we got it for the most part. Um, you know, so now what I'm gonna do is go in and with the white charcoal, pull out some more of the highlights, but yeah, battery's done. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened today. It seems to take a bit more, um, but I'm just gonna kind of block in, um, let me see if I can get it to charge just a little bit. So we'll take a few minutes and I'll keep drawing. You're not really seeing anything right now. Um, but I do want to keep working on this. So let me let that, that charge a little bit. And hopefully this, hopefully this has been helpful um, to get things started. Um, I think I'm glad we got through as much as we did on this drawing. Um, are there any kind of questions? Okay, any questions, feel free to type them out in all caps. I'm gonna let the battery charge for a little bit. So if anybody's coming on right now, they're, they're wondering what the heck is going on. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Samson Abrams 9987. I'm not clear on what you're doing to the Tutu, are you erasing to make it more lacy or what? Yeah, I'm, um, when, when working on that, that tutu, yeah, I'm kind of working on, I, I want to kind of establish a structure. I can feel, I can see some of the texture there. Again, that texture that kind of radiates out from the, um, from the center. So I'm trying to do that and I'm kind of cleaning it up a little bit, refining that form. Um, and then I'm going to come back in with the white charcoal to bring out some of the highlights. And then that edge, I'm trying to capture, again, that there's a kind of a sheer quality to it that I wanna to try, to, try to capture. And also, you know, she's, this reference photo, she's frozen in motion, right? So it's a very sharp photo. But there's also kind of a suggestion of movement there as well. And so by allowing some of these areas to be a little bit softer, it can kind of help to create that sense of movement um, and create a contrast between the texture and structure of that tutu and, and the, the figure itself. So there's a lot kind of going on in there, um, but I'm, I'm intentionally kind of being more gestural and loose with the fabric so that it creates more contrast against the, the structure of the, uh, you know, the muscles, the bone, in the gesture of the, of the dancer, so hopefully Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I'm just letting the battery charge a little bit. Um, it should have been charging while drawing. Um, and I'm gonna come back in and I'm adding some highlights here. Um, so I'm just, again, I'm working with the, the white charcoal on top and I can't wait to show it to you. So hang on there for a second. Hopefully it's charging enough that we can give it enough juice so we can, you can catch one final glimpse of the drawing. 
But this is, uh, you know, again, one of the things we talk about a lot in this series is the idea that of the detail being in control, in, in your control. Because I think sometimes we kind of default to the idea that more detail is better. You know, and I def I mean, I guess I'm saying that from my own experience. I defaulted to that. And, and it took me some time to really understand that detail needs to be in the service of the, the structure of the drawing so as not to become overwhelming to the viewer. So if, if a drawing has all this detail but you don't really understand the light and the structure and the volume of the subject, then it can become visually con confusing for the viewer rather than um, kind of being clarifying for the viewer. So kind of getting back to the dress, I'm adding as much detail as I need to in order to create that three-dimensional quality. Um, I'm just kind of going through, I'm adding some of the light to that upper arm. And I'm going, kind of going through just in a few areas where there's the strongest highlights. And I'm hoping that it's, hoping that it's gonna charge enough just again to see the, uh, you know, see the overall result. Um, so in going back to that, like erasing out on the, the tutu, part of what I'm doing too is, is anticipating where I'm gonna be adding the white and, and lifting off some of the graphite. Um, you can mix the two together. It creates kind of a bluish quality. And, um, but that may not be what you're going for. All right, let's see if it's been charged enough. Turn this on. There we go. There we have it. So I think, like I said, I think this is probably enough to get me through. I don't think we're gonna get more than a minute or so of this, um, of this battery. But um, I wanna thank you all for joining me. Join me next week, episode 99. I think what I wanna do is draw a tornado. We had one pass by here um, uh, like a week or so ago uh, that I saw on the way home from the grocery store. Pretty wild, so I grabbed a photo of it and uh, I think I might draw that next week. We'll see, but it'll be in charcoal. We'll talk about that. And, and then in two weeks, we have our 100th episode. I'm so excited, so we're gonna do something special for that. So look forward to the, some of those announcements there. Um, again, I wanna thank you all. Before my camera goes, I wanna thank you all for um, taking your time to, to join us all here and making this such an awesome community, um, making it the highlight of my week. Um, I can't wait to see your drawings, so share them on Artist Network. You'll find the link um, in, in the description below. Again, we meet every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern to draw together. Tell your friends, you can all get together and have a blast. So thank you all for kind of putting up with some of the technical issues here. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, JC, yeah, a bottle of champagne, that could be a good one. So if anybody else has any suggestions, feel free to type them out in the chat. We'll prob this will probably shut down, so you may have to type it into the, the chat for the, uh, for the discussion thread for the recording. Um, but if you have any suggestions, feel free to, to contribute them there. And I, again, I hope this has been helpful. I don't think, I, I don't feel like I can just stop. I need to keep going, it's been a lot of fun. So, all right. 
Everybody have a fantastic weekend. If you're in Colorado or out west, stay cool because it's been wicked hot. Um, see you all next week.